people. Let's uh, nail the P one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've got some six mark questions and at the the required practicals. And I hope you're nearly ready. Very many of you have been working very hard, so you should be nearly there. You should be nearly ready. Um, by the way, I did a live yesterday and I uploaded the video this morning as well. I don't know how many of you have seen it. Uh, but yeah, hi Adam, you okay? <laughs> and <laughs> I knew you were waiting. All right, then I'm going to do this. And uh, probably 40, 40, 50 minutes is going to take me to go through the required. Hi, Alan, to require the required practicals. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And you, are you ready for P1 or just a little bit of uh, help here and there? Yeah, you're nearly there. You need, but you're, you're very good with your, with your calculations already. So you're, you're fine. You, you'll be, you'll be all right. <laughs> you're ready. You're ready. You're ready. I know you can do this. Do you know what? You can, all the effort you've been putting, you're going to do it. <laughs> you already all right then just tell your friends or oh, if you join and then hi alan you are ready oh so am i as well as you alan let's go on and do it okay then yeah and thanks for all your encouraging words is actually keeping me going these videos i'm not very technologically know how to say compliant I am not too good with all these tech things. So I try my best. Sometimes my internet's not uh, playing. Um, I just try. So yeah, I'm excited as well. Uh, no, they will not. They will not. They will not. It will be fine. Okay, then. All right. Now you need to drop all the negativity. I should do it. Don't worry. This one will be fine. This one, will be, remind me again, are you doing high health and day? Which one are you doing? Come on, Adam, which one are you doing? Yeah. Mm, oh, that's why. But the, the B one was quite good, though. You're doing the triple higher. All right. Uh, what I'm, um, I didn't look at the triple higher. I'm looking at the combined. And I'm actually out to the foundation material just to help people because there's some people who are thinking they're just going to end up with a two. Now, you know, I'm just trying to see how they can at least get, you know, minimum of a four or a five because it's possible. So that's actually my, my focus. That's my passion. That's, you know, what, because we have a, a huge and a massive majority of students who, who just feel, oh, I can't do this. I'm going to give up. They're the ones I really want to help you. But if you're doing triple or you're doing higher, usually you're okay. There are a few, there are a few uh, higher materials in this one I'm going to do today. And the required practicals are the same. So there you go. I'll look at those. All right. So, yeah, thanks for coming up, for coming on board as usual. So what I've drawn on the board, this is showing the particle diagram for a solid and a liquid. All right. So they could ask you a question by explaining that uh, the windows of the, the screen of some cars have got facelt eyes when you put, put it on and they want to explain how that works. Now this one ties, hi Josiah, thanks for coming on. This one ties on with, uh, ties in with one of the required practical that is uh, the fit the, um, hit the wire one, the resistance of a wire, all right? So it ties in with that. Now, the things you need to remember or how to tackle this question is this. You have to remember to explain the arrangement of the particle in a solid. That is, they are regular, they are tightly packed, and they don't vibrate. Uh, they only vibrate within a fist position. I have written it out, so let me just put it up because it will help us go through all the points so I don't miss out on this, all right? So he said that diagram shows solid ice melting into liquid. So on the glass of a car. So how does this happen? The particle arrangement on the solid ice is tightly packed with particles only able to vibrate about fixed positions. 
Now, the, you then go to how that melting happens. So the temperature in the wire causes heating. This makes the temperature of the wire to increase. And when that increase, the temperature of the ice will also increase. This temperature increases to melting point, and then the particles begin to vibrate faster. Now, once you have the particle vibrating faster, they will then begin to spread out and break apart from the straw in them. The arrangement of the atoms is irregular, and in the liquid, the particles are irregular, so they move about randomly, spread all those vibrate, and these ones are spread out, so they are apart and they are irregular. That is a six mark question. Hello, uh, um, um, Molly. Um, I don't have questions on waves. I'm just covering AQA. Yeah. Um, is this even physics? This is physics. This is definitely AQA combined physics. This is P1. This is physics. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So I have questions that I've prepared. Uh, to go over again, I've done one of them. That is how uh, this solid melts into a liquid. The next one I want to look at is how to conserve heat in a building. How heat is conserved in a building. So some of the things you need to remember about how heat is conserved in a building is number one, conduction, convection, and <clears throat> Excuse me, you need to remember the process of conduction, that is how heat is transferred in a solid, and convection, how heat is transferred in fluids, that's liquid and gases, and how, um, yes, how heat is conserved in a building, that's what I'm doing now, Alan, and how heat is transferred through a vacuum, and that is radiation. Once you have those to hand, especially those of you doing the higher paper, you need to explain those and tie them with every part of the insulation or conservation of heat in a building that you're talking about. And a few of those, for example, are the roof. So how do you conserve heat in the roof? By putting loft insulation. How is that a good thing? It prevents heat that rises from heat particles that rise up towards the top of the roof, not to escape through conduction, through the solid, because a cavity is, is put in there and the insulating, insulating material will stop the heat from going through. So heat might rise through convection, but it stopped when it gets to that roof, the windows. For the windows, it is double glazing. Now, when you put double glazing, the two panels of the glass has a hollow between them, all right? How it has a hollow between them, and the hollow would ensure that heat does not get conducted out of the building because there is a gap that's filled of air, and convection and conduction does not happen where you have a gap, so the heat is further stayed in. And then you have uh, you have uh, walls was fitted with cavity insul insulation. A bit like what happens in the roof, it stops heat from getting out of the house through conduction. And then you can also fit in carpet. So there is no heat that's sinking through the floor. So these are the ways that you keep the heat in. So inside, you kind of create a closed system in so that there is no heat loss, so that the heat that moves from one end is actually radiated back or circulated around in the air in the building so the building stays warmer for longer. It is the same principle in a thermos flask. Those of you that are doing the EDSL or OCR, they might ask it in form of how a thermos flask is a closed system and how it keeps heat in. Alan, you just asked a question, how many marks would it be? It could be two, three, it could be asked as a six mark question. I am not sure, but I'm explaining all parts of it in case it is asked as a six mark question. Now, another six mark question that I want to look at, which is very easy for you to remember, even though you've not revised it before, but from everyday um, information that you have, you should be able to answer that, it is 
pay back time. Radiation is how heat is lost, so how its heat is transferred through a vacuum where you don't have particles as it were, because when you do A levels, you realize that there are actually particles there. But where you don't have solid gas and liquid particles as we know it today, it's called a vacuum. And now when heat is transferred in that medium, it is called radiation. That is how the heat, heat reaches the earth from the sun. All right, I wanted to just talk about the sigma question on payback times. Very important because it kind of ties in with this. For the windows, you might have the option of putting double glazing. All right, I've got, don't worry, I've got plenty of markers. I've got plenty of board markers. If that one does not work, I'll just pick on another one, pick up another one. So you have double glazing. You have the option of double glazing. So. Listen, the way they could ask this question is they could ask, say to you, you're a builder and you want to sell this idea of uh, keeping the heat and um, reducing uh, bills through electricity and heat loss from a building to a person who's building a house or you are the customer. How do you make your choice? They will give you some information to work with. So they might give you a table and tell you the cost of double glazing maybe is 30,000 pounds for double glazing, and then they'll put loft insulation. I'm not a builder, so I'm just making this up. This might be 20,000 pounds, and then they'll give you up to four or five, all right? So that is the initial investment. They might then tell you that there's another one, which is carpet in your house. So if, say, for example, it's gonna cost you 5,000 pounds for the carpet, and then they say to you, these are these are the amounts you will save every year in electricity bill because you have put these ones in. Another one is solar panel. See, I told you, let me include solar panel. So maybe the solar panels is going to cost you 50,000 pounds. But maybe every year for that one, you might save 3,000 uh, pounds. Let's say, or let's say you save 5,000 pounds. 500 pounds. I'm going to need some of you to do the calculation. And let's say this one, you save 2,000 pounds per year. The one for 5,000, let's say you save up to 800 pounds per year. And the 50,000 for solar system, for solar uh, panels, let's say you save a whooping sum of 10,000 pounds per year, if that was possible. Some of them I can do from the top of my head. So how many years will it take for you to recover the money that you spent initially from the savings that you make, that would give you your payback time. So the payback time for this one is 10 years. I've already, I know that's easy. And I did that this morning as well, 10 years. And then for this one, it's gonna be five years. Yeah, the rest of you, have you done the calculation? Which one is six? Which one is the sixth one? The 50,000 pounds for 10,000 is five years, isn't it? Are we right? Which one is six? Is if have you done the calculation? I couldn't see the top. Oh, double glazing, thirty thousand pounds, and it cost uh, five thousand five hundred. Five thousand five hundred. I need a calculator. I'll just quickly do the calculator. You should have done the calculation. The third one, yeah, the third one is is the easiest. You should have done the one that you need a calculator for thirty thousand, and you have to save. 5,500 every month. So that's going to take you about five point um, five years, roughly. And the one year of your initial, um, for your initial 5,000, and you have to save um, 800 pounds every month. Yes, yeah, 6.3. So let's look at 6.3. So if you look at all of those, you could make um, you could make um, a decision, an informed decision. So you could say to yourself, oh, I'm, I prefer the solar panel one because I'm going to quickly recover my money back in just five years. If you do that, you have to calculate, do I actually have 50,000 pounds to invest? Then you can go for that. That would be the best option if the person has got the 50,000 pounds. Now, if the person has got only 5,000 pounds, or if the person has got, say, uh, 30,000 pounds and they have the option, they can say, okay, all right, instead of doing that, I will go for this because it's going to just take me six, three, uh, six years, 300, um, six 
yes, three months to recover my money. That's my payback time. So when you look at these questions, there are no direct or restricted rights or wrong answers. So rather, you explain it. It's the explanation that you put on paper, which it has to be reasonable, which has to be based on what you're looking at, that's going to enable you to get the marks that you, des you, des you desire. All right. Another one is to compare renewable and non-renewable energy resources. <clears throat> if you're asked to compare and compare and contrast or say the advantages and disadvantages of renewable and non-renewable energy resources, these are the non-renewable ones. They are your fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are non-renewable. That is oil, coal, and gas. These are the non-renewable energy resources. They're not renewable because once they're gone, they're gone. They take millions of years for them to form again. Now, so there are advantages. It's really easy to, 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 to get the fuel and it, burns, it burns, can burn uh, very, very well. You get high level of energy. It's readily available. The, level, the uh, uh, level of technology is very easy. Lots of people, lots of countries can easily do that if they have crude oil, access to crude oil, they can easily do that. And it's so easy to get in power station, you drive in your car and you go away. And it's well known, known, but it causes a lot of pollution, produces greenhouse gases, and greenhouse gases can contribute to global warming, which can eventually lead to flooding and all the attendant problems. Yeah, gas is being trapped in the atmosphere and all of that. And then they can produce uh, sulfur dioxide. I know that there's a lot of reduction of the sulfur. So when they produce uh, sulfur, sulfur is mixed with oxygen. It becomes sulfur dioxide. And when it's mixed with atmospheric uh, cloud, uh, atmospheric uh, vapor, it can then collect and fall as very weak acidic rain, which we call acid rain and all its problems as associated with it. Now, if you go to wood, wood and biomass, the slight difference is that that is just wood. And then this one is from crops. Yeah, these are plants that are cut down and burnt to generate uh, um, energy. Yeah, that can be used to heat up water to generate electricity. Or biomass is uh, crops, so waste from food and anim uh, an animal uh, waste that gets broken down to release the energy that's stored in them. Unless they are regrown, they are non-renewable. So they can fit into the category of renewable and non-renewable. Now, these are non-renewable energy resources. Now, the renewable energy resources are, number one, the sun. <laughs> the sun, you have your solar energy. Now, that is renewable because it's a constant supply, constant access. It's good. It doesn't produce any uh, dangerous gases. However, however, this is for combined. However, the problem is that it's very expensive to buy solar panels. Really expensive. The, the whole process of installation costs a lot. But in countries where they have very high amount or high level of sunshine or very long months of summer, like Nigeria, where I'm from, they have summer all year round, almost, apart from very maybe one and a half months where they have the hamantan. And even in the hamantan, it's still very hot. So if you've got solar panel in a country like Nigeria, then it's very worth it. But in England, it's going to cost you a lot of money and you don't even have that much sunshine. So you need to think about it very carefully. Then you have um, the wind. Lots of people complain about that because it's good. It's a reliable source. However, <clears throat> However, um, the windmill, the, 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 the people, when, when they are set up, it costs a lot of money and people complain that they don't like the wind with the wind, the windmills, that they don't like them, that they just, they, they cause a problem in nuisance to their environment. People that live near the countryside, they don't want to see it. And that is a problem. It can ruin the landscape. Yes, Josiah, you're on board. So if you see this as a sismic tomorrow, you should be able to get six out of six nothing less all right and then you have tidal you have tidal you have nuclear 
Now, remember nuclear, right? It doesn't generate any toxic, it, any any uh, uh, pollutant pollution into pollu polluting gases, but the radioactive material that results from it can be very dangerous and it's difficult to store them or de get them, get rid of them because the half-life alone might take several thousands of years to break down. So that's the problem with nuclear power stations. So, and then the last one is hydroelectricity. I don't know how many of you are aware of hydro, hydropower. Yeah, hydroelectricity is what is used in my country. So hydro is water. This is where a waterfall, hi, king of games, this is where a waterfall is. The pathway of a waterfall is obstructed by a natural, by an artificial dam and lake so that the water plunges with a massive energy and those energies are then trans, uh, connected or diverted to turn a turbine and the turbine turns and generates electricity. All right, now I'm going to do some calculations. Before I do calculations, I want to draw some graphs and remind you of how to spot which is which. Yeah, how many of you remember resistors? What is a resistor? A resistor is used, <laughs> Rahan, <laughs> did you say FFC lady? Did you want to write KFC lady? All right, Rahan, how are you? Thanks for joining me. You are you are low. You you're gonna do well in GCSE when is your time? I am so sure about it. You just keep watching now, and then you're gonna get it. Yeah, biofuel. I forgot to mention biofuel. Yeah, like from biomass. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I know it. Okay, then I was just gonna talk about what was I gonna talk about? Uh, the the current and resistance. So the circuit. In a circuit, there are some things that you can do to your circuit. So you need to be able to compare these graphs and match them. So they might, on your question, draw these graphs and ask you to match them. So the graph of current versus uh, potential difference. So that is current, is measured in amps, and then you have potential difference, PD measured in volts. Now this is just that, and that is a graph of uh, current in a resistor, in a resistor that is how we're working at a constant temperature. This is a constant temperature. All right, I'm going to draw another one, which is a current against potential difference in a filament lamp. So in a filament lamp, remember my drawings and my diagrams, in a filament lamp, you still have your amps there, and you have your potential difference here. Yeah, potential difference. And in a filament lamp, it goes like so. I don't know if you're still seeing it clearly. So that is your filament lamp. All right, I'm gonna rub off the first one so that I can draw the diode. When a diode is put into the circuit, this is what you're gonna get. So that is still your current, uh, which is measured in amps, and that is your potential difference voltage that way. And then it's gonna go from here, it's going to move from here all the way there. That is your, I think I'm saying the word correctly, diode. By the way, the symbol for diode is uh, drawn like so. That is the symbol of a diode when you find it. Yes, it's good for increasing the current. Uh, when the current is high because it flows in one direction. Fantastic. Josiah, I said you are hot. You are on fire for this paper. You are going to lick it up like, like ice cream. <laughs> I don't know if you eat ice cream, but it's going to be easy peasy for you. I can assure you. Don't worry. You are going to do it. All right. So these, these are the diagrams that you need. And then I'm going to just quickly look at some of the calculations. The two calculations that associated with current, remember how to calculate the charge, the flow of charge using current and time. So that's one, and then you have V because I <coughs> arrow, arrow resistance, I current, I current and time, that is the charge. Okay, remember those uh, formula, and then remember the formula for kinetic energy. These are the things that are gonna be on your paper tomorrow. So kinetic energy is half of mass times 
speed of the raised to power two. <coughs> Please remember that if the speed is three, it's not three times, it's not three times two, it is three times three. Please remember to do that. And your GPE, gravitational potential energy, is mass times uh, mass times self. Uh, uh, the G is uh, what's the G again? Yes, absolutely. You're you're ahead of me. Yeah, well done. Okay, nine point eight. What's R? Oh, did you do the, did you do some calculation? So remember your uh, yeah newtons per kilogram is your little G, right? And those are the calculations. So now, please pay attention. I, yeah, gr gravitational field strength. Absolutely. Well done. Now, I want to remember your, yeah, yeah, 9.8, approximately 10. Absolutely. I remember. Well done, Alice. Yeah, now let's quickly go over the required practicals, all right? The, jury, the required practicals, number one, specific heat capacity practical. Remember where you can have different oils, you're using it to uh, heat up certain volume of water. It might be a six mark question on your paper, they, but if they put it as a six mark question, they will describe the experiment and then they will ask you to talk about the independent variable. That's the oil you're changing or the things you're changing. And the dependent variable is the outcome, the one you're measuring. In this case, the increase in temperature, right? Remember, and then, when you do your calculation, please watch out for the significant numbers. So they might ask you to change it to two significant numbers, three significant numbers. I usually say to my students and to you now I'm saying, when you do a calculation and you have several digits, several numbers, their digits, just remember that it's going to be, you're going to be asked to reduce it. So if you have 0 0.0289, they ask you to reduce it to two significant figures, 0 0.2 eight actually nine because you call that one and add it on the two significant figures right if they ask you to change that to a to a uh, um it's write it as a standard form it would be 2.9 2.8 or 2.9 times stairs to power minus two so watch out for those little things so you might do um six mark questions i've looked at a lot of six mark questions they might ask you to talk about how the particles change, change shape from um, how, uh, sorry, how uh, melting happens between a, so a solid ice and, and liquid water on the, on the, but on the windscreen of the car. It could be comparing re renewable and non renewable energy resources. I've covered, covered a lot and I'm still, this specific heat capacity and the required practicals, all of them can be asked as, they can be asked as a six mark question. So I was going on, they will ask you for the dependent variable, independent variable, and they will ask you to talk about the precautions. So remember to talk about the precautions. If they're using um, bensin burner, they need to wear goggles. If they're using chemicals, they need to wear goggles. If they're working with hot objects or like oil, they shouldn't boil it over. This is for combined foundation. There are a bit of higher in it as well. And then and then, all right, so without burning yourself, and you have to give the reason. Those of you that are doing the hire, remember to always pop a reason there. You can wear gloves, so remember that quickly. And then do not smell anything in the lab. You're not allowed to smell, you're not allowed to taste, you're not allowed to. <laughs> now nah, that one is just for that one is just for laughs, right? Do not go sniffing in the lab. You're not allowed to do that. Anyway, let's carry on with the rest of the practical. <laughs> You're not sniffing, sniffing, or tasting. <laughs> Remember, when you're doing practical, you have to keep safe. Don't kill yourself. It's just a practical. Have fun and don't kill yourself. Do you understand? I'm going to get on with the work. Okay. You know, you have to chill out when you're doing physics because physics and science, right? You have to really, really chill out. Okay, then let's carry on. The next one. Remember? Thermal induction. Do you remember thermal induction? When you do a practical like that, you have like containers, right? You have containers and you have to put hot water in them. They have to be the same shape. Ignore my drawing. They're not even the same shape to start with. Is that young man sleeping? He needs to wake up. <laughs> One of the people I'm working with is sleeping. I want to give him a pillow. No, no, no. He's awake. He's, he's smart. He's doing triple. He's doing triple. So maybe some of the things I'm saying is boring him, but it's okay. He can take a nap. Even when I'm tired, sometimes I take a nap. 
Um, and sometimes I snore. Yeah. What are you laughing for? Don't you snore? I know a few that love eating KFC. You finish eating KFC and you start snoring. <laughs> oh, God. But KFC is good, man. Love it. Bag in bucket. <laughs> All right, we've got this paper tomorrow, so let's crack on with it, people. Okay? And then you wrap different materials around it. Remember this practical? Yeah? This is thermal conduction practical. All right, and then you measure with a thermometer, right? My thermometer is looking a bit wonky. Or am I trying to draw drumstick now? Okay, don't worry. It's not drumstick. It's just thermometer, like structure. <laughs> Conduction. Conduction is heat transfer through, uh, through. No, this, uh, this one, this one. I've already done specific heat capacity. Is the first one. Specific heat capacity has got with when you do. When you do, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, conduction is a movement of heat through solids. That's conduction. When you do specific heat capacity, that one has got to do with when you have to use oil. Like, you know, you have a pot. Um, if I can draw a little pot. Oh, I don't know. I'm not good with containers. So if you can draw a little pot with oil, well, yeah, and it will burn and it will heat up water in a test tube. That specific heat capacity calculation. That is the formula, yeah. The formula is E is equal to ma M times your capacity. Your, this is the mass capacity, uh, heat, uh, specific heat capacity times the temperature change. So if it started at 20, 30 degrees Celsius and it went up to 45 degrees Celsius, then this one would be 15. And then you're giving the specific heat capacity of the substance and then the mass is 0 0.2 gram or, K, or something like that. Um, a kg, sorry, kilogram. Now, by the way, when you're calculating specific heat capacity, remember that if it is in kilogram, you need to convert it to grams. Sorry, if it is in grams, they give you something and they say 500 grams, you divide it by 1,000 so that you can get 0 0.5 kilograms, all right? 0 0.5 kilograms and you use that. Yes, yeah, so the amount of energy that's needed to raise one kg of a substance by one degree Celsius, yeah? One degree Celsius, that is the definition of specific heat capacity. So this is another required practical. So for this required practical, at the end of the day, you want to have a start temperature, say 20 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius, yeah? Make that like a constant so that you can clearly see which of the materials is the best to keep the heat in. So the one that raises the temperature highest is your best material. The other required practical is, uh, now this was thermal insulation. Now it's resistance of a wire where you have a current through different lengths of wire. You allow current to flow different lengths of wire. So if you have a longer one, you measure the resistance. Next one, next one, you have like several lengths. So the way you also have to watch out for, yeah, yeah, IV characteristics, practical number. Your I no, this is actually resistance of a wire. This is resistance of a wire, not IV. I will, I will refer to the IV in a minute. You have another resistance of a wire that is using a combination of resistors to check the factors which affect current in a circuit. That was where we drew the diagram of the diode and all of that and all of the components that you can use to change and vary the amount of current in a circuit. All right, yeah, V is equal to I arrow. I already gave that formula earlier, yeah. See, I already gave that formula earlier the forecast dev. V is the voltage or potential difference. I is the current and R is the resistance, all right? R is the resistance. And then you have the IV practical to which is used to investigate, investigate um, <clears throat> IV characteristics of um, circuit elements, including a filament lamp, a diode, and a resistor at a constant temperature, all right? And then you need the, the last one for P1 is density. So now if you have a regular shaped object, right? If you have a reg if you have a shaped, a regular shaped object that has got this is a 2D drawing, but if it's a 3D drawing, you have length times breadth times height. Now you can work out the volume, which would be centimeters cube. All right. That is volume. But if you have a a shape of a, a shape a, a structure of irregular shape you use displacement 
you use displacement and you need the Eureka can. Yes, you need the Eureka can or displacement can, which you can use. And the way you use it is you put the material inside and the amount of water that's poured off, you collect in a measuring cylinder that is equivalent to your volume. All right, another question talks about the alpha particle. So this is one of the questions. You have the alpha particle plus and plus yeah, you have the alpha particle, non and non, and then you have inside the helium. So you can be given this as a question and you need to work it out. Now, the difference between the alpha particle, I don't know if you can see this very clearly, the alpha particle and the um, helium, this is helium atom. Yeah, in one of the questions, you were asked to work out the size of the average size is one times 10 raised to the power minus 10. Okay, that is the average size of the helium. Yeah, and if you have, um, um, I'm trying to look for some other questions I have not covered. Right, I'm on the alpha particle now, and then that's bigger. The difference is that here you have electrons, and here you don't have electrons um, orbiting around the nucleus. So those are the difference. And the mass number is four. And then yeah, the, the mass number is four and the uh, atomic number is two. Okay. Another question says, why is the helium atom neutral? The helium atom is neutral because it has the same number of protons and electrons. And if protons are positive, electrons are negative. So they kind of balance each other out, which is why when you have sodium, it's an atom, but when it loses an electron, it becomes an ion. So a charged atom is an ion. This is just an atom and it is neutral. Okay. And then they talked about potassium uh, 40. Potassium 40. Yeah. Changing to calcium. So it says uh, it decays to calcium 40 and 20. Obviously, with the, that giving off. All right. And it says, what's the difference? The mass numbers are the same, the uh, atomic numbers are different. And this one has an additional um, proton with it. All right. And then it says that the activity of a sample of potassium was measured three times and they gave different readings of 4906, I believe, and 488. Um, I've kind of memorized it. And the third one was 4956 um, BQ. And he said, why was that? Is because of random radiation. All right, because of random radiation. That's why you can read that. And then half-life. Yeah, who remembers half-life? Who remembers half-life? Uh, uh, no, uh, alpha, um, the, this, this sort of question that I've asked you is actually on paper one on the AQA. It's not P2. It's P1 on the AQA. I pulled it out from the exam board um, assessment materials. It's actually on paper one for the AQA. All right, so uh, yeah, I believe momentum is paper two. Exactly, someone's giving me the definition of half-life, the time taken for half of it to decay. So if you're given a graph, right, please watch this. You will be given the time, yeah, in, in, in hours, in minutes, in millions. See, my, my, my alarm is always going off, I beg your pardon. Is because um, I set it for round about this time so I can get some things. I can start beginning to prepare myself to go to bed. I'm not fasting. It's time for me to just start to wind down and go to bed and prepare for the next day. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, then. It's all right. You're excused, Zach. Okay. And then you can, I, I'm going to upload it. Don't worry. I'm going to upload it. All right. So the time can be in millions of years, thousands of years. Yeah, and then you're going to have the mass here. So always, if they say this is 2,000 grams or whatever mass is, 
please watch out for where the graph begins. Don't just go 2000. You have to look out for where the graph actually starts and then half it, trace it here and then trace it to the time. That is how to read off a graph of um, half life. Okay, no, but no, no problem, Zach. I'll upload the video so you can uh, watch it later. All right. <clears throat> and then I'm looking at a few more things. I'm running off. Um, I've done. I've pretty much covered a lot of the things that I wanted to cover. Yeah. Remember how to calculate your. Um, efficiency, I don't take anything for granted. He says, can you? Um, grid. All right, yes, I've got questions about the national grid, actually. Where is it? I've got a question about the national grid. Now, a few things to remember about the national grid is um, you, you have, wait, wait a minute, I'm going to pull up the question. I've got a proper question from the exam board and I want to look at that right now with you. Just give me a minute. I'll pull it up. Okay. All right. I found it. So it says on the national grid, there is this particular national power station. It generates electricity at 25 kV, but a step up. Now, these are the things you look at for. A step up transformer, a step up transformer increases it by a factor of 16. So it then asks the question how much um, um, electricity, how much voltage output is this? Very simple, you multiply it by 25 and you get 400 kV. Now, the reason the step up transformer is very important is because. The, the, this transformer, uh, the, the national grid needs to carry electricity, generated electricity at a very high voltage to get to very far away distances because they don't put power stations in your bar garden. They don't put power stations where people live. No, they don't. So they put them very far away. So when it is generated, it will have to then pass that electricity over a very long distance to get to houses, schools, hospitals, and all of those pay places. <laughs> Criminals beware, high voltage, all right? So because of that, because of that, it has to push it at very high pressure to get to homes. So when it gets there, you then need a step down transformer. It then, <laughs> Lord, it then you then need a step down transformer. So that stem down transformer would ensure that it drops it down to two. Is it is, is my calculation right? Is that 4,000 or is that 400? Is that 400? I just want to check my calculation. So hang on, you know you're doing this paper tomorrow. So it raises it by a factor of 16 times 20. Yeah, I was right. See down to 230 volts because this is the one. Now, this is cave. If you were to multiply that by 1000, it's several, but it drops it very little to 230 volts because that is the allowed, that is the allowed level of, of voltage that should come households and for is safer for customer. And that is done using a step down transformer. Questions on the national grid, they're very easy to answer. They're made from pylons. Yeah, and then, yeah, that's it. Those are the basic questions that I found on the, <laughs> the MIG. <laughs> well, <go on. laughs> who is this? <laughs> Have you been eating some KFC? Because that makes you excited. Anyway, I'll just carry on. So those are the questions about, um, yeah, the step up and the step down transformer. Okay, those I think I've covered by and large what I wanted to cover, what I wanted to cover, and I hope you guys are okay with some of these things I've gone through. I've done this is my third video on, on P1. I'm now working on P2 because I know I should be working on B2 and C2, but it's okay. I'm just
going to work on PG. You have to do all of B2. All right, I'm going to do it. Yeah, thank you so much. That's all right. You know, you just keep keeping positive. Whatever you do, keep keeping positive. If you're ever down in your spirit, run out and get yourself some KFC chicken popcorn. It does wonders. When you're eating your KFC, you will be fine. The development of an atom, uh, atomic theory, that was atomic theory. You can look at that. You can look at collision theory. But when I was looking through the requirements and I was looking through the uh, thing, and I did not see those things, so I didn't put it. I just tried. Because there's a lot to cover. But what I focus on, I pull out the checklist and I just... Uh, look through what the exam board is focusing on. So those calculations are heavy. The questions I've gone on over with you, with you um, um, on the, what do you call it? On the six mark question, look out for those ones. They will be on your paper. What did you say? What would you predict the six mark has to be? I've already done my prediction. Where have you been? Where have you been? All right, I'll quickly go over them again. You need to look at comparing different ways of keeping your houses uh, heat in in your homes and you have to give reasons for your loft insulation your cavity and all of those you need to look at those things and you look at you need to look at payback time like double glazing solar panels how do you compare them then you need to look at how uh, all the all the six uh, all the six um, what do you call it the six required practicals look at those ones very well the equations and uh, did you just wake up I have been doing the equations and I've done the equations. I've done KV, uh, the KE kinetic energy. And by the way, different forms that energy is stored in, the thermal and uh, potential, uh, gravitational potential. I've looked at all of those in my first two videos. Few bits of sleeping all day and I've been doing the revision. And then they suddenly wake up. Don't worry, don't worry, you'll be fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna upload this video. The video I've done today, I'm gonna upload upload it and then you can watch it again and then you're gonna go to the exam and write your exam. Thank you diagrams. I've already done that. Okay. I just quickly look at thank you diagram because I wanted to do this for 40 minutes. It's not 40 because some of you are talking about KFC, all right? So what I'm going to do, you like potatoes. <laughs> Cheese, the good chips there. Oh, thank you, Zach. Thank you, I understand. You know what I'm going to do? I'm videoing it, and the person who's videoing me, her hand is hurting because I've got some stands here. Yeah? I bought them, and they're very dodgy, and I don't know how to operate some of these things, some of this equipment. Actually, I've got lots of equipment that I buy, and I don't know how to work them. So I think after GCSEs, all of you that have been watching, you have to tell me how to work my equipment. Because someone's videoing it, right? And then their hand is hurting them. They can only do this for like, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks, Benny. They can only hold it up for so long. And then I want to go and chill because they actually want to chill out. Okay, you next time, and you will do well. Remember to say it to yourself, Miss Adela said it, and I believe it. It is so I must pass because you must. Thank you for staying with me. Stay again with me next time, and God bless you. Bye bye. Oh, thank you.